Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and I'm here to uh, do a little bit more of converting between Unreal and uh, Unity. So another cool thing in Unreal is uh, the skybox. Um, we went over this sun thing um, already uh, in a previous video, so if you want to see that, that's uh, that's up. Uh, that shine, shiny glow thing uh, with some love and affection, some artistic touch, you can get the same exact effect. So I want to go over these clouds. These these clouds look cool. They're moving, um, but let's break them down. Let's break them down by looking straight up. You notice that the skybox is just rotating 360. You can see it definitely when you look straight up. It's just spinning in a circle. Uh, however, when you're looking to the side, it doesn't look so much. It looks like it's going forward. But if I look over here, it's spinning to the right. And if I look over here, it's spinning to the right. Everything keeps spinning to the right. So it's actually just spinning in a circle. So let's take that logic and uh, let's apply it inside of Unity. Uh, so uh, I don't have it open, so I'm going to pause the video and get everything set up. So actually, before I do that, I want to go over how to, uh, how to make your, your skybox. Um, uh, so let's, uh, there's this, we this website that's uh, pretty cool. It has 360 degree skies, um, which we need. So it's uh, continuum3d.com. And they have some skies. I'm interested in Sky 9, no sun. So if I open that up and I uh, save this image to my desktop. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. Yes, I can time travel. We are now in Photoshop. So I'm going to hit open. And I'm going to go to that image. Uh, there it is. Sky 9 Unsun. Sun. Open it up. And now I'm going to go ahead and crop this here to cut out this gray part down here. So I'm going to crop that. And now that I have it cropped, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the image size to 1024 on both of them. So a 1024, um, so that's a nice square. So now that it's a nice square, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to go to Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates, hit OK. And I'm going to get this nice round image. So uh, actually, um, I have a, another idea. I need to, well, the bottom is, is blurred. Uh, yeah, this is, sorry, this, I digress. This. This is good enough for test purposes. You're going to have to put a little bit more work into your art, obviously, to make it look amazing. But uh, this will just get you started. So I'm going to go ahead and save that out. Save as uh, PNG, I suppose. I'm going to just call it uh, sky underscore nine uh, underscore BG. And the reason I called it BG is because I'm going to do a select color range. I'm going to select this blue here. And I'm actually just going to delete out the blue. Oh, sorry. First, let me double click my background layer and then uh, delete out the blue. So I get something kind of foggy like this. Um, of course, with, you're going to have to thin out your edges and make it uh, better for you. But I'm going to save that out as um, Sky 9. And instead of BG, I'm going to put OV for overlay. So there we go, we have that saved. So now I'm going to go ahead and open up Maya. All right, so now once inside of Maya, I'm going to uh, apparently lag a little bit. So there we go. I'm going to create polygon primitives sphere. I'm just going to drag it from the center of the grid here. Sorry, it's lagging a little bit. I have a virtual machine using up 6 gigs of my RAM. Um, so I'm going to turn on the shaded mode and the texture mode. So what I'm going to do to the sphere is first I'm going to cut it in half. So I'm going to right click and go to face. I'm going to hit the space bar, jump to the side view. Um, Actually, before I delete it, let's just 
let's just give it some more faces. Uh, let's give it uh, powers of two, 32. 32 is good. So now let's go to face. Select the bottom half and delete it. So you're just left with the top half. Now right click on this. Um, go to object mode and select it. Now, once we have this selected, uh, let's hit spacebar and jump over to our top view. Go to create UVs, planar mapping. And you're done with your planar map. So now we can go ahead and open up window rendering hypershade. So bring up our material editor. So now we're just going to create a new Lambert. Middle click and drag onto the object double click on the Lambert you can close out the hypershade hit this checker box on color choose file choose the file system uh, browser go to desktop or wherever you put yours and choose sky9 underscore background open that up you can see we now have a nice seamless uh, sky dome so the last thing we need to do is go ahead and select it then go to normals reverse and now uh, you can't see it here but if you go to shading and go to back face culling you'll see that it's inside out which is fantastic so now let's go to file uh, we can do uh, export selection let's just go to the desktop export it as whatever you want I'm gonna export it as sky and then just export it so now that I've exported it um, Let's go ahead and close this out. We don't need Maya anymore. And let's open up Unity. So I'm just going to create a new project called Sky Project, and I'm going to import a character controller, and then just uh, create it. So now I'm here inside of Unity. The first thing I want to do is uh, create a, no, I don't want to create a GUI skin, delete. I want to create a folder and I'm just going to call it uh, Sky. It's not necessary, but it's nice to keep things clean. So now I'm going to click on Sky and I'm going to click on my Sky 9 BG and Sky 9 OV and drag those into the Sky folder. So now that they're imported, uh, I'm going to first find my main camera here. I'm going to turn off that for now so I can see my grid. And I'm going to create a, let's just create a box, a cube here, set it to 000, zero, zero. set it the scale to 10, uh, 0 0.5, and 0 0.1, and 10. It's good enough. I guess 20 might be better. So let's put 20 in here on the X and Z. So now I'm going to go into the standard assets, character controller, and drag in the first person camera, or player controller. And now uh, is the, the fun part. I'm going to drag in my sky. It is minuscule at the moment, um, but that's okay. We can hit the sky here and change this to 1, and then just uh, apply it. Now it's a little larger. And now we're going to scale this up to something like... 75 on all sides so it's nice and big and you can notice that uh, our texture came with it so now it's it's a little bit light for my taste we can go to this uh, material click on where it says diffuse and now we want to go to vertex lit now select the second color turn it to black select the third color turn it to white um, the white may be a little bright for the bottom half. Um, we can drag our sky dome down a little bit so we don't see the bottom half uh, much. But in game, I think this will get a little darker. And then let's just take our shininess all the way down. So that's one. Now let's click on our sky box and let's duplicate it. So we have a second sky. And let's make that sky around 50 in scale compared to the other one. So what are we going to do here? First, we're going to change. Uh, we're going to create a new material down here where the other one is. So create mm. material. Sorry about that. That was my phone. I'm just going to call it sky underscore nine underscore ov. 
and I'm going to select my second sky that has a 50 and 50. I'm going to put my OV on it. It's going to lose the texture, but then I'm going to drag my overlay on. Now I'm going to go to the change the shader mm -hmm. to transparent, vertex lit, and I'm going to turn the white to black. I'm going to turn the black to white, and I'm going to turn that down. So now we basically have uh, two the image overlaid on itself and if I change this to something like 75 degrees or change this Y you can see that now we have a set of clouds in front of our other clouds which will be nice for parallaxing so I'm gonna just set that to 75 whatever you want and I'm going to do our favorite part I'm gonna create a folder yes creating a folder is our favorite part and name it script or scripts and then inside of the scripts I'm gonna create a C sharp script I'm going to call it sky. I open this up. So now I have the script open. Um, I need to change this to say sky. And uh, I can delete the start, but I can add a public float called speed. And I'm going to set that to something, something really small, like 0 0.0035, something like that. And inside of the update, I'm just going to say transform dot rotate, and I'm going to pass in zero speed and zero, and we're done. So now let's uh, close out of this, and let's drag our sky script to both of the skies. And one thing we want is we want the clouds that are closer to spin a little faster, so we can change this to have a higher number. Now these may be too fast, but uh, we'll debug that as it goes. So just to add a little bit of ambience, I'm going to create other directional light. I'm going to pull that back so it's facing. Let's make it rotate. Let's see here. I've got to find how I want it. I may just set the rotation to zero zero zero. Now it's facing that way. I want it to face this way, and I want it to face down a little bit. All right, so now I can move it over somewhere over here and move it up, and that's good enough. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say draw halo, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to actually go into assets, import package, uh, light flares, and import all of those. And now I'm going to open up the standard, open up light flares, uh, choose sun, and drag that over here to the flare. And now I think all I need to do is uh, go ahead and hit play. So you can see our sun is there, and we have our clouds spinning. And if we look directly up, they're spinning around. Let's speed them up just so it's a little bit obvious. Let's set this to... Uh, 0 0.01 and this one to 0 0.075 so now let's hit play and uh, now you can tell uh, if I go into the scene view you can really see it the clouds are rotating and I can increase their speed a little bit more since it's a little slow for my taste um, for demonstration pur purposes you can change this to like 0 three now they're going real fast yeah I like that so now we can go into our game uh, my son is flickering for some reason I'm sure it has something to do with my video capture but you can see now we have clouds moving and it's nice and pretty like unreal with a little bit of work and heart I could create the I could make these clouds look really beautiful um, so if you really put some heart into it and and put some work into your art your clouds uh, can be just as beautiful as Unreal's um, out-of-the-box features. A lot of people think Unreal is just superior in rendering, and that simply is not the case, especially now that both of them are using DirectX 11 in Unity 4. So there is no engine that's superior than the other. It's all marketing ploys. Um, Unreal just has a lot of out-of-the-box stuff that makes it easy for artists to make uh, pretty stuff quickly. Um, whereas in Unity, you can, you'd can you have to download stuff from the Asset Store uh, to make it just as fast and streamlined to make pretty stuff. 
but not one is better than the other and you can see here I have clouds just like Unreal functioning at least like them. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and if you combine this with the uh, the sun shafts you could make uh, you can make the opening scene from Unreal and uh, surprise a lot of people with Unity's rendering power especially if you have uh, Unity 4 and you start using some tessellation. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this and that is it.